Admit it, for a split second, you thought that this was the GR Yaris. In fact, some of you still watching might think that this is the GR, but it's not. This is the Toyota Yaris GR Sport. Essentially, it's a standard Yaris underneath with the same engine and powertrain, but it's got some slightly sportier tweaks and also a little bit of upgraded suspension, which I'll talk about in a moment. But overall, it's just kind of a trim level off of the standard Yaris. And because it hasn't got that four wheel drive and the two litre engine, it's now more comparable to this, my UP GTI. In today's video, I'm gonna be finding out whether this is the car that I should have bought. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then hit that subscribe button. So actually, when I posted that I'd bought an UP GTI, there's a few things that I said that I wanted. I wanted it to look good. I wanted it to have some sporty elements. I wanted it to be fun to drive, economical, and also have a good warranty. And a lot of you said, Tish, why didn't you get a Toyota Yaris? And I'll be honest, the thought had crossed my mind. So let's take a look at the GR Sport Yaris and let's see what's different from the standard Yaris. The horizontal grille of the standard car has been replaced by a gloss honeycomb design, which when it catches the light can actually appear chrome tipped. There is also a sneaky GR badge on the front bumper, although around the back they've actually added the sport part. At the back, compared to the non-sport models, it also features a new T-shaped diffuser, which has hugely improved the presence. There's no denying that whichever trim level you go for, the new Yaris looks fantastic. It's quite low, it's got that squat feel because of the wide wheel arches. I also really like, you've got the crease in the paintwork which flows into the rear lights. It does look like an aggressive car, and in this sport trim, that's even elevated even further. In fact, it's got some pretty big wheels. These are 18 inches. That's two sizes bigger than on the entry level Yaris and one size bigger than on my UP GTI. They have got some red flecks as well, which give it a sporty feel. However, the brake calipers aren't finished in red like on my UP, but that's something which could very easily be changed. I also love it in this color, this pearl white paint with contrasting black roof and black door mirrors. The GR Sport has also been reworked to deliver sharper handling too. Extra underfloor bracing on each side of the car has increased its structural rigidity. Aerodynamic drag has also been reduced by adding liners to both the front and rear wheel arches. The suspension systems have also been upgraded with the shock absorbers optimized to react quicker at lower speeds, improving steering response and ride comfort. If you needed any more convincing that one of these cars looks decidedly sportier than the other, you only have to look at them from the back. It's the Yaris, right? It's much wider, it feels much more chunkier, it looks sportier. Both versions have had some upgrades over their entry level models. On the up, you've got this black rear spoiler and you've also got the red bar which runs along the center. But other than that, that's pretty much it. And it actually looks quite boring aside the Yaris. Now on the Yaris, it already got a rear spoiler as standard. I'm pretty sure it already got this red bar which run across the center. However, it's also had a redesigned rear diffuser which makes it look much more aggressive. Although there is one thing that really gives it away on both of these cars, that they're not actually that quick. And that's the single exit exhausts. Boot space in the GR Sport is unchanged over the other trim levels. That's an acceptable 286 litres. It isn't its biggest in class, with the Ford Fiesta carrying 311. However, it can manage a little more compared to the Compact Up, which can carry 251. However, it looks even smaller due to the width of space. But let's face it, if you're buying a small, fun city car, then you're probably not that fussed about how much you can fit in the boot. And anyway, if one day or two day you did need to borrow a friend or family member's car with more luggage space, then that's really easy to do. Do you know, this is the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Cover. Cover is a short term flexible insurance solution and they've got a fantastic app which is really easy and quick to use. 
You can download the app via the link in the description box, where all you need to do is input your personal details once and then insuring a car from one hour to 28 days usually only takes a couple of minutes. There's even a handy feature where you can send a link to the car's owner to share all the relevant insurance details. Thank you so much to Cover for sponsoring today's video. Space in the back will depend on the class of car you're comparing it to. It might be tight against a Polo or Fiesta, but it already has one up on the up with three seats. Head and legroom are okay, but the centre console will impede on the middle passenger space. There are electric windows, but no phone charging ports. You only have to be driving this car for around 10 minutes to understand that this and the UP GTI have very, very different personalities. The Toyota Yaris may have a ton of GR badges on the interior and the exterior, but when it comes down to it, it really is just the hybrid model underneath. And that means that when it comes to having fun, doesn't really know how to do that. It knows how to be a fantastic commuter car, how to take the ease out of long journeys. But when it comes to spicing things up, that's when you're going to need to look back to the up. You just can't beat a manual gearbox and a turbocharged engine. This car, however, has a really good eCVT gearbox. Now, it's not perfect, but then the eCVT does improve on the old CVT gearbox, which was really notchy and really noisy. Now, where this car does get quite noisy when you first put your foot down, it's not really anything like in the previous generation of cars, which really did put people off. Despite sitting at the top of the lineup, the GR Sport trim of the Yaris is more focused on sport rather than technology and equipment you get standard. Inside the cabin, there's a splattering of GR badges. You've got one on top of these sport seats, which are finished in cloth and also have some red contrasting stitching. You've also got a GR start stop button as well, which feels quite nice. And this car does come with keyless start, but not keyless entry. You also get a GR badge on this leather wrapped multifunctional steering wheel, which again has red stitching. So that feels nice, good quality. You also have a leather gear shifter with again, that contrasting stitching. The rest of the fit and finish is not too bad in this cabin. There is some scratchy plastic, but it does feel kind of nice and plush. There's not too many shiny kind of glossy plastics, which are going to get really dirty. You've got a nice centre console along the centre with some physical buttons which change your drive modes and also control your EV modes. You've got a couple of cup holders and you've got a tiny little armrest which is just about big enough to fit your mobile phone but still it's always nice to have an armrest on a long journey. You've got nice bits of rubber which are on the inside of the two sections here where you can pop your mobile phone and it won't roll around. However, here is much harder plastic. And when you put anything in there, if you break suddenly, there's nothing to stop those things from flinging outwards. You've got a decent amount of storage. There's a good size glove box and you've also got some nice deep door cards, which will hold a large bottle of water. Despite the fact that there is some nice squishy materials in this car as well, it's not particularly well sound insulated. There's still quite a bit of road noise that comes into the cabin, which is a real shame because in fact, that gearbox has improved. So it's much quieter than it previously was, but that road noise still does unsettle your ride slightly, which is where you're probably gonna wanna put your music on. The thing with this car is it's quite easily a car that I'd live with absolutely every day. And that's not something that I can say about the UP GTI. However, when it comes to the weekend and grabbing a car to go and have a bit of fun, this wouldn't be it. And then there's the price tag. When the previous generation of GR Sport Yaris came out, it was sub £20,000. However, this new car has an increase of £5,000 over the outgoing model. And whilst it definitely has improved, that then puts it in Fiesta ST territory. And to have a car which really does have some serious power, you're probably going to opt for the Fiesta. Although the Fiesta could only dream of nearly 60 miles per gallon. Some days 
when I'm driving on these long journeys, I wonder whether I should have gone for an automatic car and whether I made the right choice when it comes to the UP GTI. The GR Yaris Sport is a fantastic little car. It offers a really easy driving style, which is economical and looks great from the outside as well. However, it can only dream to be as fun as the UP GTI. Nothing beats a manual petrol turbocharged engine. However, I think it's a little bit mean to pin these cars against each other because I don't think the Yaris wants to be an UP GTI. It just wants to offer you all of that really economical, easy drive, but in a better looking package. And for that, I think it does its job perfectly. But let me know, should I have bought this? Or do you think I should have bought one of these? Pop it in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you wanted to see more videos like this, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Now, I've been driving this thing for a week and I've still got three quarters of a tank. So, see you later up GTI, taking the Yaris. Thank you.